Hi everyone, it's been some time since I did some work on the drone project and I thought it's about time I um, I did some work and um, and updated you all. So, where did we get up to last time? Well, I created the drone, put all the bits together and um, I may have shown you a small battery pack which I fitted just for testing purposes and that's about as far as I got. So we are missing one very important thing and that was the flight controller. So, what's included in the flight controller? Well, basically, the flight controller is the unit which gets a signal of some sort and basically tells the drone what to do. So, you know, accelerate, bank left, lean forward, etc. So, that was what the flight controller was supposed to do. And of course, to do that, it would communicate with the ESCs, the electronic speed controllers, and um, and it will go from there. So, um, what's this video about? So this video is about specifically the transmitter. So I've built a transmitter. It's not complete, so I'm not going to tell you exactly how it works at the moment. That will be for another video. But, um, but yeah, here's the transmitter. So I'll just zoom in so you can see. And I'll just explain briefly what things are. So I've got the FTDI there and that's connected to USB of course and I'll show you some code later. I'm, again I'm not going to go into depth, I'm just going to tell you the basics and I'll go into depth another time when this thing's finished. So we've got the FTDI there which is the um, the you know Arduino to PC communication device if you like. We've got an Arduino Pro Mini in there and from the Arduino Pro Mini we've also got one of these analog sticks so I use the analog stick to um, to tell the transmitter whether I want to sort of lean forward, lean back, lean to the left, or lean to the right. Um, I've also got two buttons here. These represent the shoulder buttons. This is rotate left and rotate right. So there are three states in this particular control. No state is I call it one. Left state is 0 and right state is 2. So it's three states. So in other words, if that's down, then rotate left or anti-clockwise. If that's down, rotate clockwise. If none of them are down, don't rotate. So that's basically how that works and that works. Then I've got this slider here and the slider is the acceleration or vertical position if you like. So that would slow the motors down and they'd start getting faster. They'd probably start lifting about here. And uh, this is the force generated, basically, uh, lifting force. So that would be basically it's acceleration and uh, lift, if you like. So that's that. And what else have I got here? Of course, a very core part the actual uh, transmit. Well, this is actually a transceiver. It, it transmits and receives, or it has the capabilities to anyway. So this is one of those NRF modules with a capacitor soldered to it. And um, there's the, the antenna. So this is one of those high-powered ones. And of course it makes sense to have a high-powered one because, um, you know, it could be quite a distance. So, yeah, so there's a very brief overview of the, um, of my trial... Uh, transmitter. So um, I'm going to show you briefly now the transmitter code and um, hopefully you'll like it. Okay so this is the code for the transmitter. I'm not going to go in too much depth here because it's not finished and it's not really tested properly yet either. But um, it used the TMRH20 library and you can see that RF24 um, because it is an NRF 24L01. Um, so basically this, this unit, the transmitter, is just a collection of variable resistors and buttons and uh, just a transmitter um, or a transceiver. So I use the same code pretty much as I do in my other tutorials, in my NRF tutorials. Uh, it's pretty much the same with a few optional extras uh, like uh, you know an array to hold the um, the values that you want to transmit um, and some other basics. Um, 
So yeah, it basically samples buttons and then transmits every certain amount of time. So you can see there's something here. Um, so when it samples it, it samples them as a byte, so from 0 to 254. And um, then I convert that to hexadecimal because hexadecimal um, characters, sorry, hexadecimal values contain less characters in them than byte characters do. So for example, if I was to send 255 in hexadecimal, that would be FF. And um, if you're composing a whole string of values, uh, hexadecimal will take less value. So that's why I've done that, just in case, well, for future use, just in case you want to add more in one transmission. So that's why I've done that. And then transmit. Um, it's pretty much the same as um, in my NRF tutorials. So that's basically how it works. Okay, so time to show you some testing now. So if I bring up the serial monitor, um, I'll just reset this device. Um, okay, so it says set up and ready. And you can see that it's bringing some values through to the serial console. So let's see what this is. So NRF transmit, TX transmit. So the transmitter is transmitting those values to the receiver. Then the receiver sends an acknowledgement packet back saying received. And then there's some diagnostics. So there's the byte array of the values we've received from the buttons and variable resistors, or in other words, the controls. And that's what it's encoded it to. So I'll just go through this here. So byte is obviously a value from 0 to 255, and they're from the variable resistors and the buttons. Uh, well, variable resistors, basically. Uh, so that would be the analog knob. Um, and the slider. Um, so when it's coded, basically um, it's converted from 255 to um, hexadecimal. And the reason why it's converted to hexadecimal is because hexadecimal values are shorter. So if I was to get 255, for example, as a byte, well, in hexadecimal that's FF, which is just two characters. And the reason why I did that is because um, Maybe in the future I want to use a bigger string of uh, values to send. So I thought I'll try and keep it as short as possible with the maximum amount of values. So that's why I've encoded it in hexadecimal. So uh, what are these values? And uh, I'll show you. So the first one, we'll start at the bottom here. The first value you can see is zero here. That's the uh, throttle. So if I just move the slider up, you should see that it goes up, there you go. So it's going up and up and up until it goes to FF or FE, something like that, FF. So that basically resembles uh, 255. I'll put that back down to the bottom. And now we'll move on to the analog stick. So if I move it forward, you can see it's FE or FF, which is 255. If I let it go to the centre, you can see it's 7F, and if I push it down, it'll go to 0. I'll let it go again, and then the next one, if you move along, this is bank left, which is 0. Do nothing, which is in the middle, which is 7D, and then to the right is FF, which or FE, which means bank right. So now, I've got two push buttons, or tax switches, or what I'm going to call them. Then if I hold the left one, this value goes to zero. If I let go, it's one. If I tap the right button, it changes to two. So basically, if the value is zero, it means rotate counterclockwise. If it's one, it means don't rotate. And if it's two, like this, it means rotate clockwise. And yeah, so that's how it works up to now. So I've got more testing to do. And um, yeah, so that's as far as I am. So. In the next video, I'll show you the receiver and how that works. Okay, thanks for watching.